Hey there, Amanda from The Happy Homestead here. Today I'm going to be making curtido and I'm gonna take you along for the ride and show how you how to do it at home yourself. So you may be wondering, what is curtido? Great question. It is a tangy, spicy type of sauerkraut. I believe it originates from El Salvador, around that region, and so it's traditionally made just as a sauerkraut would. It's a fermented cabbage dish, but it's not just the cabbage and the salt, right, which is what sauerkraut is. We have the cabbage and the salt, but we also add in carrots, jalapenos, onions, oregano, lime juice, some hot pepper flakes, and it is delicious. I make this every year. I'm gonna be making, I'm hoping about three quarts today. I usually do it in a half gallon mason jar, but I'm just gonna do it in quart jars today. And it's really good as a topping on tacos, any other type of Latin or Hispanic dish you would make, on sandwiches. It's really good, trust me, even my family loves it. <laughs> so let's get started on making our curtido. So I have three green cabbages and they are really small. So I've got three of those. I've already torn the outer leaves off, but what I'm gonna do is cut these open, core them, and then put them through the shredder of my food processor. And so when you cut up a cabbage open, you can see the core, right? The core is right here. So I just wanna cut that out. couldn't tell you why these cabbages are so small, but they are. Okay, and I'm just going to start shredding these. Get one more cut. Fermented foods have a place in every kitchen. If you have not experimented with fermenting your own foods, you need to make that your goal this year. It's easy, it's affordable, and they are packed with so many pro and prebiotics. All right, let's start with these two. So I've got my, if you can see my shredding disc on my food processor. I've got the top open here. I'm just gonna put these in. Once the bowl is kind of full, I'm just gonna empty it. I have a rather large stainless steel bowl here that I'm gonna empty all of our contents into. So right, when you make sauerkraut, you're doing the same process that I'm doing here. And then you add in salt, massage the salt through the cabbage, and then you wait about an hour to see some of the, the natural juices get released. We're doing that same exact thing here, except we're gonna do all of the ingredients in the bowl, get the salt in, and then let it sit for a little bit to release. Once you have the natural juices released, right, it's massaged in really well, you got a good amount of liquid, then you start stuffing it into your mason jars to begin the fermentation process. I have carrots, cleaned up carrots. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm going to shred them. Might be able to get these all in at once. Nope. 
Okay, and then we'll throw our shredded carrots in. And this is going to look like a lot. I mean, that's why we did a rather large bowl. But I promise you, it is going to come down a lot. So I've also got some scallions, some green onions that I found in the fridge. I am just going to chop those into rounds. And put those in. I have a yellow onion. I'm just going to do half of the onion. By the way, let me show you my tip for how to cut an onion so easily. I learned this. I used to take cooking classes a long time ago for many, many years. And um, I learned so many things, but this is by far one of the favorite things I've learned. And that is how to cut an onion <laughs> the easy way. So what I've done, right, is I've just halved the onion, took the skin off, and I just took, cut the tip off right there, right? So as long as you keep the root intact, it keeps the onion easy, right? So you can, you, everyone knows how to do the slices this way, right? Just do the small slices, which I was, that's what I was going to do here. I'm going to do a little bit of both. Or you can actually turn it if you want to get diced onion and you cut down, but not all the way to the end, right? The root helps keep it all in place. And then go through and you've got this perfectly diced onion. It is something that I am so grateful to have learned because dicing an onion can be tricky if you already have cut the root off. All right, so we're putting that in our bowl. I'm going to save this other half of an onion for something else. All right, I've got a Napa cabbage. I'm not going to put this through the food processor. I am just going to roughly chop this. Try to do a little at a time here. And this is just because I had this in the fridge because I had made kimchi. If you haven't seen that video on how to make and ferment your own kimchi, click up above. But I had this left over and I really wanted to use this up as well. So it'll just add a little more texture to the curtido. You know, and fermented foods have that amazing tang, like true sauerkraut, right? True fermented sauerkraut has such a great flavor. You know, when you buy it in the store in a jar, you know, in a can off the shelf, like a room temperature can jar, I should say can, right? Like a aluminum can. And that was fermented at one point, but then it was heat processed within the canning and so all of those beneficial probiotics were killed. They were gone. All the good stuff. So when you eat sauerkraut that's been on a store shelf like that, not in the refrigerated section, it tastes good, but it doesn't actually provide you much nutritional benefit. So you can buy sauerkraut, kimchi, you know, other like fermented pickles, all that stuff, usually within the refrigerated or produce section of your store and just check and a lot of that stuff has the good beneficial bacteria. Okay, all of our cabbage is cut and y'all this does look like a lot. I get it. <laughs> this is a lot of curtido and it is going to be amazing. 
So we've got almost everything in here. We want to get our herbs in here and our jalapenos. All right, let's get some jalapeno sliced. I usually wear gloves for this. I'm hoping I don't regret not doing that. I take the seeds out. I don't mind the heat of the seeds, but I just don't like the feel of eating the seeds. Okay, and we're just going to do these in kind of slivers as well. So when you're making any kind of dish, right, salads, cortito, anything with a lot of chopping, with a lot of variety of items, think about the texture and the appearance. I always like to think about, you know, how do I want it to look? Do I want everything to be the same exact size and the same texture, right? Or do I want to have that varying, the variance within my dish? And I like the variance. So having, you know, the shredded cabbage and the, the Napa rough cabbage and then the shredded carrot with the diced kind of roughly chopped jalapeno. I mean, this is going to be so good. I am going to do another jalapeno. I had three here. I'm going to do the other one. if you're worried about the spice level, then just take the jalapenos out or use sweet bell pepper instead. And that way you'll still get the texture, the beautiful color, but you don't have to have the heat. All right. So all that's left is oregano, hot pepper flakes, lime juice, and then we've got to get our sea salt in to create the liquid. I'm gonna get the juice going for our lime. So I'm just kind of rolling the lime, right? If you've ever done this with a lemon too, it really helps release the juice from the different membranes within the fruit. Ugh, these are big limes. Okay. And we're just gonna squeeze it in. So I have everything in the bowl. Guys, I had to take a break and clean up the kitchen. I'm the kind of person that I have to clean up as I go. I, I can't stand messes. <laughs> so I had to clean everything up. But everything is in our bowl. I didn't put salt in yet or our spices, right? What you saw me put in is all that's in there. So there's a couple of things we need to do, right? We're gonna get our hot pepper flakes in. We're gonna get our oregano in. And then we're going to weigh how much, how many pounds we have of these raw ingredients. So I have another one of these bowls so I can put it on the scale, tear it out, and then put my full bowl on the scale so I can get an accurate weight. Now, if you don't have two of the same bowls, right, the easiest way to do this, I'm not necessarily doing this the easiest way, but the easiest way to do this is just to weigh the bowl you're planning on using first, write it down, and then when you have your full bowl, just add it on and subtract that weight of the bowl so that you're not making your cortito too salty. It's not about whether you're having too much salt, 
to make it unsafe or too little salt to make it un, you know, unsafe again. It's more about your taste level. So per pound of raw ingredients, I do about one and a half teaspoons of sea salt. And I have like the pink Himalayan sea salt right here. So this is what I'm gonna use. One and a half teaspoons per pound. I don't want it too salty. I want it kind of right in the middle, even with the road, just really good curtido. So I'm gonna weigh my empty bowl first. The spices aren't gonna add that much weight, so I'm not worried too much with that. It's 1.9, one pound, nine ounces, so I'm going to tear it. And put our full bowl on. All right, so I am at six pounds and four ounces. So I'm just gonna say one and a half teaspoons, right, for six. So one and a half times six is nine. But because I have four ounces, I'm just gonna go to 10. I do 10 teaspoons of sea salt. So I'm gonna add that in and add my herbs in at the same time. I've got some food safe gloves here that I'm just gonna use my hands and really mix everything up and mash it around, kind of work those salt in, um, and that's what will create the juices, and then we'll let that sit, and then we'll pack it into our jars. I mean, I already have the raw jalapeno in here, which will mellow out over time. So I'm just going to do one teaspoon to start because my hot pepper flakes are really potent. They are um, Thai chili, habanero, and some other hot peppers all dehydrated and ground up. This is pretty potent. I'm starting to smell it already and trying really hard not to sneeze. <laughs> so one teaspoon is good. Oregano. I love oregano. And you really can't have too much of it in the curtido. So I'm going to do, I think, five teaspoons. So now we're going to get our gloves on. And we're going to start mixing. Mixing and massaging. Now, if you didn't have a big enough bowl to do this in, you could do it over two bowls. And again, this is going to break down a lot and really come down in volume. So I'm just working my hands through, really trying to mix everything up, bringing everything from the bottom to the top and repeating. And while I'm doing that, I'm squeezing, right? If you can see, I'm like squeezing everything. And that helps the salt really get worked in, but salt is a natural, you know, kind of dehydrator, right? It brings, brings the juices out. And that's what I need. I need the salt to help bring the juices out of the cabbage because it creates like a brine, right? And that brine is what you need to help ferment your curtido. So if you remember when we made fermented carrots, and I'll post that link so you can go watch that video, but remember when we made fermented carrots, we actually made our brine, right? We did the water, the, the filtered water to salt ratio. Whereas when you make sauerkraut or cortito or even kimchi for that matter, 
you're not creating that brine. You're letting the cabbage do the work with the salt to create its own brine. And so as you're going through this, you know, I may feel I need to add more salt because I can see some liquid coming out, but I think I'm actually gonna add a little more salt and massage it in, and then I'm gonna let it sit. We're gonna try to wing it this time this way. Okay, that's good. You can already see the volume's gone down. Do you see that? Do you notice the difference? It smells so good. The lime juice, I can smell the lime juice. It smells so good. You could also put cilantro in this. Cilantro would be really good too. I very rarely have fresh cilantro on hand. I do have dried cilantro, but I just like it the way it is with the oregano. So I'm gonna keep it that way. But you could add cilantro in in place of the oregano or in addition. Watch that, watch when I do this, if you can see around my fingers, the liquid coming up there, see all the liquid? That's what we want. We want to see that when you press down, we wanna see that brine. So I do not wanna add any more salt, but what I am gonna do is pack this down and just let it sit for probably about an hour to really let more of those juices come out. Look how much, it's already gone down by half. Look at that, half the volume already. So yeah, I'm gonna let this sit for one hour and then we'll come back, mix it up a little bit more and start putting it into our jars. It's been about an hour that I've let the Cartito sit and I can see the brine coming up. I'll show that to you. So really what we're gonna do now is we are just going to stuff this in to as many as possible, as many as I need, quart canning jars. You can use pint, half pint. I wouldn't actually go half pint. You could do pint. You can do any size you want. Just know that you need to have the right size mouth for your airlocks if you're using those or you're using the piece of fabric, right, that I had mentioned or the silicone gaskets that I have shown in previous videos. Just make sure you have the right wide or narrow mouth, depending upon what you're using. I prefer to do these in quarts. I actually have never done it in any smaller vessel because, not because we go through it, through it so fast, but because I don't need 10 pints of Curtido in my fridge. <laughs> if I can get away with three or four quarts, I'd rather do that. Now, like I said, last year I did a half gallon one, a really large one. I did that one of uh, Curtido and I did a half gallon of kimchi. And they lasted just fine too, but I wanna use my half gallon jars for something else. So I'm gonna do quartz this time. So let's go ahead and stuff this in. And remember, just like with the kimchi, when we're putting it in, we need to make sure that we're really trying to get rid of as many air bubbles as possible to really make sure that nothing else is growing besides the lacto-fermentation process doing its thing. Okay, so hopefully you can see, I can see the brine. Let me put my gloves back on and I'll press down and you'll be able to see how much liquid is in there. I mean, look, if you can tell, it's there's so much, it's just pooling up. So we are ready to get this in our jar. So we're gonna take a quart jar 
Okay, wide mouth funnel. Much better. Now I can just shove this in and then I will take the funnel out and use my fist to really push everything down. Let's start here. It's important that you really get it down. You can see the liquid already coming up. The tighter packed it is, not only the more can you get in, but the better and more evenly the fermentation process will happen too. Do you see all that liquid? It's perfect, it's beautiful. All right, so let's go a little more. Now I gotta be careful because I don't want my liquid to overflow. cannot wait to eat this on tacos. This is one of my favorite things. Okay, um, I'm gonna put a weight on that, but I'm gonna get my other jars filled first. So I had three quart jars. But I might need another one, I might need four. And so these are just gonna ferment in our pantry. It's dark, it's relatively undisturbed, where I'm gonna put them at least. And I'm gonna let them ferment for at least a week, maybe up to 10 days. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait a week and then I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna smell it, I'm gonna taste it, see what I think. Funnel, Amanda, funnel. Um, and then once it's to the, the good kind of tangy flavor that I like, we'll take it out and put it in the fridge, just like we do all the other ferments. Yeah, that one is good. Look how much liquid there is. Number three, I do think I am gonna have a fourth jar. Y'all, I can't even begin to explain. The smell is amazing. It smells so good. It's the lime juice mainly. That's what I smell mostly, but it smells so good. The lime with the jalapeno and the oregano and plus you know this is not something that I have actually ever found in the stores to buy and I even rarely find it at you know a, a Latin or Hispanic restaurant right it's not even anything I've ever seen on a menu or brought out with a dish at a restaurant so that's why I love it also so much is because it's nothing that you know you can get anywhere else and of course nothing is ever better than homemade homemade is always the best but you can bring this to you know have a taco party or a dinner party and bring this out i keep saying tacos but guys it's good on so many things and people are gonna love it and they're gonna say what is that how do you make it can you make me some Okay, yeah, I definitely need one more quart jar. This is also one of my favorite things to do just to preserve our cabbage, right? Every now and then I get successful with growing a cabbage in our garden. And I love doing this with things we've grown. I've even done it with Chinese cabbage and that's just as good too. Okay, so now we're gonna put the weights on definitely need to clean up all this brine on the counter okay so we've got our four jars 
I want to clean the rims up. Okay. So we've got some weights. Oh, I'm afraid that we're going to get overflows as we ferment. Look how much brine there is right at the top. This may have an overflow during my fermentation process like my kimchi did. Alright, I need more weights. Yeah, there ain't no lack of brine here. This one will be good. Okay. And then we are going to put our airlocks on. So remember with the airlock system, I've got to put a little water in here and then we put the stopper in and then the top on and screw it on. All right, so our cartito is packed up. It is to the brim with the brine. I can already see the brine a little bit right here in the coming up the valve. So I will have to keep an eye on these in the pantry, but they, like I said, will sit in the back of the pantry for, I'm gonna start with seven days. I'm gonna check them, make sure we don't have any overflowage and seepage anywhere of the brine. And then around the seven day to 10 day mark, I'll taste and see what, see what I like. It's all about me, right? <laughs> My family will just eat whatever. <laughs> um, but it's so easy. So let's give it a week and then we'll come back. It's been 11 days since I started my Curtido ferment. So this was a very active ferment for me. And what that means is that multiple times <laughs> the Curtido fermenting brine came over, right? It kind of came out of my airlock tops. At one point, there was a rather large kind of mess underneath my jars because I had them in my pantry and so it all, and the pantry shelves or wire shelves. So it kind of all came down on the items below it. It was a pain, but let's think positively. It was a very active ferment. <laughs> it was a good thing. So I took them out. I've actually already taken all the airlocks off and uh, cleaned everything up. I also took the weight out. I'm gonna show you. You can keep the weight in, and for sometimes I do that. Like for my kimchi, I actually kept the weight in, even in the fridge. For this one, I decided not to, um, for no other reason than I just decided not to. But let me show you what this looks like. So it's not as wet, right? But it's still um, a very, perfectly fermented curtido. If at any point I start or you start seeing anything accumulate in the jar. So you're not gonna see something necessarily grow right smack in the middle, but sometimes on the outer sides of the jar, like if there's a piece of cabbage that um, you might see maybe starts to grow a little white mold or something. I will often just take my finger and kind of run my finger along the edge and get out some of those loose bits because that's where you would see something. Um, now, do not get scared if you see any types of mold, especially like the white molds, right? Now, if you're, even some of the greens, I know this is gonna sound horrible and you're probably cringing as you watch this, but even some of the greens, I usually, if that happens, I'll just take a spoon and scoop out the entire affected area, put it in the sink, down the drain, and then put everything back in. And at that point, I might take a weight 
weigh it down, make sure the brine's covering everything. Now, if you see anything that really does look sketchy, it smells bad, it just, you're not comfortable, then dump it, right? At least, maybe not the whole jar, but at least that top portion to get any bad affected parts out. I have rarely had that happen though. Um, so yeah, these will last. They are delicious. They do have a little kick. They do have quite a bit of tang since I let them go 11 days. It just adds that different texture, that different flavor, and it's really delicious. So I hope that you'll try to make your own Curtido. Experiment with it. Experiment with the flavors. Make it your own and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you will be notified when new videos come out. Stay healthy, stay well. See you next time.